Uh, people who uh, introduce artists on stage um, often say their guests need no introduction. Uh, in the case of Mikhail Baryshnikov, this is actually true. <laughs> uh, but an introduction is a nice thing, and I have one. Uh, born in 1948 to Russian parents in Riga, Latvia, where he began studying ballet as a boy. He is today the most celebrated ball uh, classical ballet danseur of our time, a name that sits in history uh, beside Nureyev and Nijinsky. He made his debut as a principal dancer with the Kirov in 1969. His uh, flawless technique and expressiveness, Clive Barnes of the New York Times called him the most perfect dancer he had ever seen were already legendary when on June 29th, 1974, at the age of 26, after a performance at the O'Keeffe Center in Toronto, he defected from the Soviet Union. His defection electrified uh, not just the rarefied uh, ballet community, but the entire world beyond it. In 1980, he began a controversial decade-long tenure as artistic director of the American Ballet Theatre changing the way people thought about dance. A decade after that, he managed the unpredictable again and founded the White Oak Dance Project, which did for the popularity of modern dance what he'd already done for ballet. In 2005, he opened the Baryshnikov Arts Center, a creative home for perfor uh, performers and artists, which is essentially the BAMP Center, but smaller. <laughs> Sorry. and in Manhattan with no mountains. <laughs> His his acting in movies has earned him an Academy Award nomination for The Turning Point and a Tony for his work in Kafka's The Metamorphosis, not to mention even greater fame with a new generation who know him as Alexander Petrovsky. <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw's older Russian boyfriend <laughs> on Sex and the City, the guy who does not get the girl. This appears to be the only time in Mr. Baryshnikov's life that this has happened. His television dance specials have won two Emmys. He appears as an actor on stage to this day. He's a published photographer, a much published writer, and a children's book author, a businessman, a restaurateur, a father of four. Through it all, he continues to practice, to teach, and always to dance. And I think most of all, it's his example, uh, the, his intellectual restlessness and daring, and his lifelong dedication to making art and making it new uh, that have inspired dancers and human beings alike. He is a recipient of the National Medal of Honor, among many other awards, and in 2010 he was given the rank of Officer of the French Legion of Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, there is not only no one like him, there is no one even close. <laughs> Would you please give your most rousing mountain welcome to Mikhail Baryshnikov? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, welcome to Banff. Well, thank you, thank you. Nice to be here again. And I've been thinking today, just next year would be a 40th anniversary since I first time came to Canada, mm -hmm. 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is one of the things I want to talk to you about, but I'd like to start with a question that I, I have heard you don't like talking about. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's They're not... all, actually. You know? <laughs> I've heard that as well. In that category. Uh, the, uh, 
the fame, as I was reading about you, I began to realize that the fame of the great male ballet dancers is different from the fame surrounding uh, even, say, Tiger Woods or Meryl Streep or, or say, Jerry Seinfeld or other artists. The, there are other people who are almost like them or close to it who do something similar, but there is only one great male dancer at a time, and there is only one Barishnikov. So my question is, w when did you first realize how how great this legend might be, or how how great it it how hugely it loomed around you, and did you like it when you discovered it? Seriously, I never uh, ever in any age of my career, you know, I've been thinking seriously about those things, because I knew kind of uh, instinctively it will be on, on, on your way, and it's, it's not the most healthiest attitude. Plus, um, people who know me, you know, I'm really, uh, I, I think in arts, there is no competition in arts. Everybody, uh, or if you're a musician or um, a singer, painter, uh, everybody's trying to find their own ways to, express um, herself, himself, uh, in your medium. Because uh, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, we are in the business of communication, and um, we have a different timbre of voice, different body movement, different signature, different voices. And to compare and to say who is better, who is worse, I mean, who is the second, who is third, I think it's just totally counterproductive. What people are saying, you know, the, it's, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Sometimes. Or whether the world of ballet builds up that legend to, for whatever purpose. Well, that's why it's called legend, you know, yeah. I mean, and uh, <laughs> it's just irrelevant in my view. So you're saying that there is no, there's no first best, there's no second best. So that seems a very difficult attitude for uh, certainly North American society to, to grasp. Maybe the arts are, the, are uh, the place where we find that tolerance. You know, I, I recently, you know, um, my right and left hand was twi twisted twice and I, I, um, I did address, com it was commencement speech at Northwestern University which actually my, one of my daughters who will graduate next year there insist that I, I will do this. They roped you into it, really? Yeah, you know, and, um, and there was a moment actually we discussed this in family around the table, you know, but very important. And, uh, and uh, she suggests that moment, you know, that uh, indeed, in, in art especially, in everywhere, you, um, you don't strive to be the best. You want to be better every day in your craft. Then you will advance. But when you really are having goals in front of you, be best and be bet best and best and best, you, very few people get there uh, uh, really far enough. Mm -hmm. you know. Can you take me back to, to Riga? You enrolled in your first dance school on your own. Yes. How old were you when you did that? I was um, probably nine years old or so. And I your father I, was I not told my parents that I will, I will go for the audition, for examination. Yeah. And I don't want them to hold my hand. You know, I knew where it was, you know, that we signed the documents necessary. I passed medical examination and I accepted. But, and your father did not like that? Well, he was, you know, I was nine years old and um, um, my mother m smiled and, you know, I was very proud and said, well, we'll, we'll let him try for a couple of years, we'll see. <laughs> your mother said that? You no, know, my father actually. Oh, your father did? You know, yeah, my, uh -huh. my mother sort of. You Did know, you get hug along me, kiss well? me, yeah. and uh, and uh, that's it. Oh. Did you get along well with your father? Not really. Yeah, he, not really, p for different reasons. Not that he was a military man, and uh, 
in uh, teaching in uh, in uh, uh, academy and military academy, and uh, he had a different life. He was a member of Communist Party, not a religious man. And my mother was very simple and very. Um, from the peasant background, but um, intuitively really very uh, gifted person. Um, she admired arts, all kind of arts, and uh, she introduced me um, to uh, a lot of things. So a, a few years later, uh, you moved uh, to Leningrad, where you're taught by the great Pushkin. W was he a demanding teacher? No, he was very soft-spoken. He was, uh, never raised his voice during the, uh, during the class exercises. Uh, but he had this uh, um, extraordinary um, perceptive uh, you know, method of uh, a very quiet, um, you know, people admired his uh, softness and uh, his uh, delicacy uh, and uh, with the approach with his students and he was adored by everybody. Mm. Uh, you, you were famous for your, your jumps. Uh, I gather Pushkin jump, uh, pushed it higher. I don't know what I was famous for. I mean, this is a <laughs> jam students or this. I, 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 I he's, uh, all his students and then, of course, the people whom, because he, um, he taught in the school and also in the, in the company, the Kirov Ballet, a class of the principal uh, dancers. And, um, uh, that was every everyday hard work for everyone, you know. And uh, uh, I was just got lucky to get into his hands, you know, into his class. Yeah, as always with a great teacher, it, it's a uh, it's luck or some kind of fate that you you end up. There. And that's that's happened. So in 1969, you make your debut. What was life like for a, a exceptionally promising dancer in Russia in those days? And you've said you had everything, but... Well, it's, uh, um, it's sort of uh, freedom uh, if you want to, um, to attack a, a kind of roles which you really uh, dream to dance. Although in classical ballet you have very few uh, you know, musicians and uh, singers have much better and bigger repertoire than classical dancers, you know, because uh, uh, great choreographers, you know, uh, uh, left us very, very little, you know, a few classical, uh, you know, tradition, traditionally famous, uh, uh, you know, ballets, Tchaikovsky and Petipa and, and uh, few others, uh, Gorsky, Fokin, Nizhinsky, but uh, in general, generally legacy of, uh, uh, and the future of classical ba ballet, it's uh, kind of questionable because it's always kind of a little bit drags behind and, and behind and, and slower than any, uh, any other aspects of, you know, arts. Which is that's what called you know the uh, the classical ballet is a tradition. It is like uh, you know um, a bit archaic, mm -hmm. and I knew kind of uh, always that I want to be involved with the new work. We, and the, that was not encouraged. You felt stultified. Well, to you know, at that time, and it was um, you know. Um, Late 60s, early 70s, I danced all, you know, in a few years, all romantic and, and sort of classical parts, you know, and, and Giselle and Don Quixote and uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty, Prince, you know, and all these roles, you know, but um, um, my, my dream was always to work with the uh, uh, choreographers of new, of uh, new world, new new step. Mm -hmm. So w when you came to New York, 
you had a lot of personal freedom. I mean, you, you start to work like a lunatic with all kinds of, of different choreographers. You do uh, 22 roles in, in 18 months. Twyla Tharp complains at one point that she gets only 50 hours to work, rehearse with you, whereas normally she would get 500 hours. That seems like a lot of rehearsal time to me, 500 hours for a dance. Well, I mean, it, it was a very exciting time for me, you know. I was, in, in, I was invited to work in Europe or here and in, in Australia or South America or Paris, London, blah, 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 you know. It was, a, it was a, the most difficult times that, the most difficult moments for me were really make a personal decision, you know, what not to and uh, accept. And I made a few mistakes, but I kind of learned, you know, uh, um, I was always wanted to do with the, with the best. Uh, and, um, and it was very intuit intuitive, you know, because I really uh, knew very little about uh, North America, particularly New York, uh, ways to perform ways to the theater ethics, how to behave, what language to speak. You know, that was a lot of, um, a lot of kind of serious uh, uh, moments. And uh, luckily, I, uh, I met uh, a lot of uh, interesting and very kind and nice people who really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Including an entire uh, firmament of great choreographers, everybody from Balanchine to Tharp to... Yes, but you know, you, you start or whatever you work with, uh, you know, John Butler or Glenn Tetley or Twyla Tharp and later on, you know, Paul Taylor, Martha Graham, uh, Robbins, Balanchine. You know, it's a, every person, it's a different story. You don't go to the choreographer and say, please, can you do a piece for me? I want to dance here. Uh, you know, uh, you That's what I would do. You would, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what I heard about you. Um, uh, you kind of hang out, you go to see their work, you know, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, uh, uh, of course, you, uh, you sometimes go in, let's say, in my already 40s or 50s, I could approach it. very young uh, choreographers say, uh, come on, kid, let's do something, you know. Let's go and, and uh, to, to the studio if you're interested, you know. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, to go to Sir Frederick Ashton, you know, and do things, you know. You kind of wait patiently for invitation. And luckily, uh, you know, I, I got quite a few, you know. And even in, in, but still on the table were a lot of choices. It's nothing actually changed right now. I do, maybe so now it's more, you know, to work uh, in the theater, more than the dance, when I still uh, do a, a few little, uh, you know, performances, like recently I did a little season with Mark Morris, a new piece, and uh, I, will, I will dance in September one of his old uh, solos, you know, for one of our benefits for my center. Uh, but now it's more choices about uh, theater working uh, and performing and already kind of... When you decide you go to the... Uh, uh, make a break and you start to do all kinds of new things, uh, you do Barishnikov on Broadway, you do Barishnikov in Hollywood, you make movies, uh, you, you do the TV stuff wins some Emmys. Are you ever nervous that... Uh, Every day. I wake what, up nervous. No, but about what people are going to think? E yes and no. I, 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 do quite, I, I do have quite a bit of a thin skin about... A certain a certain things, but at the same time, so, so like sign, such as though, what, what are you thin skinned no, about? Such as you know, failure. We are all afraid of failure, but excitement to 
uh, uh, to give yourself a chance to stretch yourself and to uh, open certain frontiers for your mind and body and for your audience too. Because let's face it, we all we're doing this, you know, you don't sit and, at night and, and talk to yourself in the mirror at home, you know. I do. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you don't have to. You're smart, you're charming, you're brilliant, you're well known. You know, but you sometimes taking projects which is kind of not just what we are doing, something you write and you know. And that's where all artists are stretching. That's why the, the, this center is designed for young artists to come and work and find new language and find themselves in a new situation. Why? I mean, I was so impressed the last two days visiting the facilities and it's, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I have to ask a second time for political asylum. <laughs> Cultural. <laughs> twice, twice in 40 years, yes. It's, it's Cal harder to cultural uh, asylum. But, but, uh, it's, harder, it's harder to get, it, to get cultural asylum in Alberta, though. <laughs> no, but it's, it's fabulous that, uh, you know, that uh, it's wonderful sponsors and, uh, you know, sponsors who are actually for all people, you know, that's uh, because investment in arts, it's the most important investment uh, uh, in the future. In the future of, in the future, it's their future. Uh, uh. Was it hard to learn to dance like Fred Astaire? Nobody can uh, the, ever learn and dance like Fred Astaire. It's impossible. Because. I, he, uh, he opened something in himself, and he was such a perfectionist, and immense talent, and workaholic, and you know all those things together. But uh, nobody ever would ever would g get close to him. That's my opinion. You know. You know, with all these transformations, uh, the public fame, and, or, or beginning with the defection, I guess, you come to, to dance in America, you do all these different things, you, you cross over, not just to different genres, uh, to, to modern dance, but out of dance into acting, this huge push into the new. Um, I'm afraid to get bored, you know. It, that's all it is? Because it almost feels but deliberate. Y y there is certain, it, it's a kind of a cliche, but it, it, there is certain truth in this remark. You know, I, uh, I, uh, I'm a nervous performer. You know, I, I like the process, what you do now in, in those workshops, much more than actually performing. Um, I'm getting not bored by getting restless. I, I want to do something else after a few weeks or a few months or, uh, of performing a, a, a dance or a play. I want to go back, I want to go t into the studio because I feel that I start to uh, sort of uh, getting, uh, my car gets into the swamp a little deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, and. Um, uh, although you can always, the longer you perform, the, the, you have more chances to improve. And yet, there is a clock is ticking, you know, and uh, you know that there is uh, somewhere you have to step out from the stage for good. For good? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, when you uh, so far, uh, fail to produce adequate uh, uh, interesting work, uh, or your best friend, or your wife, or your uh, uh, the public will say, genug, enough. <laughs> you know, then, then you, uh, and then I want to, uh, I, I want to do a new project, and I, will, I would like to give myself opportunity to wake up and get excited to drive to my studio or on some rehearsal and start new work. Like a new movie, maybe. Will you be in another movie? Um, 
I've been offered many movies which I, I passed on because it was all stupid, you know, to play, <laughs> uh, you know, to play some Russian gangster or or a, fr or a frustrated choreographer. Uh, <laughs> What about James Bond? And in Bond? my age, let's face it, you know. Uh, James Bond? Ah. No? Can you do, do, no. do a little audition now? Bond, James Bond. No, no, not no? with my accent, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I can play a bad guy in, in James Bond. A bad guy might work. I, I think you've been playing him a little tonight, actually. But um, <laughs> you, you met, uh, you were married to Jessica Lang. Uh, we were not married, though. You were not we, married. We were, we were together. Sorry, yes, yes. partnered. Yes, not legally, I don't. Actually, we married with my wife Lisa for a few years. But I generally, you know, I am agnostic about marriage. But <laughs> although we are married, you know, and we are perfectly happy. We were perfectly happy before the marriage, as we're happy now, mm -hmm. married. It made no difference. Yeah. No difference. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you break up, but you have a... Her mother appreciated, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Her I, I can understand that. Um, you have a child, the first of your, of your four children. Yes. Um, and everybody says this, and you have said, that it changed you, that, that it... Uh, Put something into your drive as an artist. You're into your drive in your career. That, oh, of course, children change your life. And uh, we were talk talking today with Lisa uh, during the lunch about, you know, me being sometimes absent father uh, to my children. And, um, and and there were element of truth, of course, and uh, uh, but um, what uh, me or together with my wife, we always uh, have uh, there are sometimes disputes around the dinner table, you know, and uh, voices flying up and this and that. But uh, we kind of. Uh, I always, at least I always thought that you cannot educate children around the table. They, they, it, 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 you know, education of, of your child, it's not the best performance of your career. It's, it is a, it's a very slow process and, uh, you know, you just, uh, they just observe you, ab observe your behavior to others, how you live and what, right, what kind example. of choices yeah. you make. And uh, if you now, they are already, you know, an adults, you know, I have uh, two grandchildren, two girls, you know, eight and, and ten from my uh, Alexandra Shura, uh, my oldest. And, you know, when you rec recognize something, really some, some goodness in, in your child, something really, L lovely and uh, and it's the best it's the best gift in the world you know just to experience that it's uh, you kind of even uh, in little way involved in their lives. You know. I sometimes find it's a little bit they're a bit like um, uh, critics of a performance because you know a very long performance of twenty years but they remember the two minutes in which you weren't very good. <laughs> You mean the making? <laughs> Just two minutes? Something like that. That's a point. I have to it, think about it. Did you, um, did you enjoy the Carrie Bradshaw uh, Sex in the City? Yeah, by the way, speaking of Sex and the City, you know, I, I, we have to really make this really clear that actually this is not a reality show, you know that? <laughs> this is actually TV sitcom, and it, 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 it's, it's, you don't ask me, for example, how, the, how many children that M Mr. Big and Carrie has now, you know? <laughs> Because I don't know.
It's happened to me a few times. <laughs> I swear to God, it does. Now, did I answer right? No, uh, that, uh, that was my next question, actually. Uh, It was fabulous experience, I said. I'm sorry. It was fabulous experience. Yeah. No, I mean to be to you know that year, that last season. Uh, it, it, I I had a great time. I thought it would be just a couple of episodes and on that, and the role kind of stretched and till very end. And uh, but I learned a lot about television, about this very hard-working people, you know, when you see any sitcom, you know, oh, they're coming, they do it, like so, but they work, you know, uh, day and night. It's so difficult for 10, 12 hours a day, even changing a text, there's a writer's, uh, you know, line, there's a, every, every episode is a new director, a new set, you know, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it was rough, but I, I enjoyed the experience. I know you don't care very much about money, but... Who did, said you said this? <laughs> like, uh, being, being an artist, I thought you would be why, dedicated. Why do you think I'm doing now? Also, this money wouldn't go to my pocket. It would be for, yeah. a, for a, one of our productions and BAC, you know. But I, I'm uh, not being a, a dancer myself, and as you can tell. Uh, I, <laughs> I wondered, how does the money for going on Sex in the City compare with being a principal dancer at, say, the New York City Ballet? A bit better money. A bit yes, better? Yes, a bit better. <laughs> no, no, if I, it was very comfortable. Mm. I felt, uh, I want to ask you. Unfortunately, how much I have to pay taxes. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, to you have to pay, when you're on TV. You have to pay taxes, or, or always, at any time. always. Yeah, well, that, I'm glad to hear always. that. Always. Um, you know, in the 1990s, you uh, you shocked the world. You you move into modern dance. You 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 create White Oak, the dance project. You once said that you thought modern dance is more democratic than classical ballet. That is closer to the heart of the people. Well, what did you mean by that? Well, it's more American as well, I guess. Well, when you dance barefoot, let's say, barefoot, you know, it's much more democratic to start with, not to, not to wear a, a ballet slippers or, you know, character shoes. No, I'm, uh, uh, this joke felt flat, yes. <laughs> felt really flat. I thought it was so deep. It's that dry Russian humor of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, well, uh, uh, look at tonight's performance, all these fabulous uh, Azure's dancers, you know, and we chat a little bit backstage, and I thought, what was the most pleasing besides this extraordinary looking group, you know, and, and uh, extraordinary technically um, equipped people. They were performing with a great humility and uh, without selling it, their performance, how their, their bodies r revealed them individually as human beings. And it's the most uh, extraordinary gift choreographer can give to his or her dancers. And that's what I, from very beginning, you know, when I looked um, at uh, dancers of Merce Cunningham or dancers of uh, Mark Morris or uh, a beginning uh, of the first, uh, first dances of Twyla Tharp's company. I mean, they were uh, those people who uh, can also be extraordinary dance uh, equipped. You know, and then can um, voluntarily reveal their very dark secrets about themselves. You know, and complexity, and uh, and same time they appreciate that privilege, being on stage in front of the audience because it's uh, 
and measurable high. Mm. It's interesting that you say without, without commercial pressure. When you started the Barishnikov Art Center a couple of years ago, um, you, you did that to free artists from commercial it's pressure. It's almost 10 years ago we started. Yeah, so. 2004. So obviously, commercial pressure is something you think is sometimes not so great for making art. Well, like commercial pressure. I, I was uh, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to raise enough money for a uh, for a uh, uh, for a uh, uh, house of my dreams. You know, I was I was afraid to drop in in the, in the ball right in the in the midst of it. You know, and because of that, remember, you know the very serious uh, economic depression kind of repression uh, happened, you know, everything kind of stopped in the United States and, you know, and, uh, and also, you know, um, the government didn't quite, you know, we have a system of non-support of the arts, uh, completely opposite in in country with a, social, a socialist backgrounds. You know, and uh, I don't know what you're talking or, uh, about. No, no, I don't. I don't either. But uh, well, let's say constitutional monarchy or parliamentary system. You know. Hey, don't knock the monarchy. She just had the baby. It, it's it's a bad oh, time to go anti-monarchist. Enough about the baby. You know. Baby's cute. There were so articles about baby, uh, uh, baby cribs, you know, just like that. It was really not the Rolls Royce of it, and not it's like in the middle road somewhere made in Sweden, you know, the reliable, you know. <laughs> the king carrier. Especially yeah. in the articles, big articles in oh, newspapers yeah. about baby well, this, crib. Yeah, just like. This is what journalism is for. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> It was a slow day in journalism. Yeah. Uh, I, I read somewhere that you hardly ever go to classical ballet, any, ballet anymore. Uh, rarely now, you know, because when kids used to grow up, we took them to see Nutcracker and or Sleeping Beauty or Swan Lake, you know, something. But, you know, as I said, the clock is ticking and I want to see something that people who are pushing envelope. And I do go to see people's work like Alexei Ratmansky. I'm going to see, working with the ballet theaters, the, does great stuff. And you know, when, uh, and he's working also with Christopher Wilden or Mark Morris or, you know, people who are uh, really, but, but to go to see another four hours of classical production for me, it's kind of this, this this time would never come back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, not, no disrespect. To, you know, there are some interesting classical productions and, and wonderful dancers. I've just been there for so long. I just, you know. Sorry about that. But you. <laughs> you you're, I gather, a big fan of, uh, of Mad Men. The show Mad Men. Yes, I am. Yeah. Who's I your favorite character? All of them. I'm in love with these people. I, I, I think I, I born in different times, and I, I wish I could be in the United States during, you know, the, the times 50s. in the 50s. In advertising. Yes, and why not? Please do not ask any questions about how he's doing in advertising. But you see, the 50s produced 60s, which was the most fabulous time in the United States, probably, yeah. you know? Yeah. All this, and how 60s affected, like, a group of a Judson group, you know, this, uh, uh, all these fabulous innovators, yeah. you know, uh, how and they are affected you know, and then John, that, that John Cage and, 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 and Merce Cunningham and, uh, you know, yeah. uh, George Balanchine and Robbins and the Broadway and the theater. I mean, we are in, uh, right now in a bit of a, a bit of a slop, you know, in arts, in my view. 
Uh, Why so? Well, because it's, uh, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, we lost um, avant-garde of uh, elderly avant-garde of, you know, start from Anton Tudor and Sir Frederick Ashton and Kenneth Macmillan, George Balanch and Jerome Robbins, you know, uh, recently Merz Cunningham. I mean, the people who were really at least opened my eyes on, uh, on, uh, on, on dance, you know. Uh, lost, not just them, there was quite, um, and, and after them it was just kind of a gap. You know, and, and, and especially with the, uh, with the departure of, of uh, um, uh, John Cage and uh, Merz Cunningham, you know, for people of avant-garde that they were really uh, a light tower in the, in the ocean, you know, and um, you know, we all adored, admired, and learned from them as much as we could, yeah. although I'm not a choreographer. Mm -hmm. um, Do you feel it when they I mean, when John Updike died? I practically had to lie down for four days. You know, I, he was such a inspiration and such a great writer. Yeah, and after them, you know, especially in in classical dance, there was a lot of uh, you know modern dance choreographers who just started, and you know, and uh, and a lot of people. Uh, their uh, their admirers are, but it's kind of slow. There is a new departure, Alexei Ratmansky, let's say, in the classical dance, and uh, you know uh, Christopher Wilden, and then a few others. And you know, I uh, not just I am choosing them. They're indeed, uh, you know, like in any art form, or in uh, in Hollywood, or uh, or in music, or. Uh, there is a handful of people who really moved, uh, you know, moved the envelope, and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, who you who you want to keep in your circle to to drive you, yeah, yeah. It's can, can we? I, I don't want this to sound the wrong way. Can we talk about your body? My body. <laughs> yes. What do you want to talk about? What part of my body you want to talk about? <laughs> Not it hurts all, of all them. over, <laughs> I'll tell you. Not all of them. Um, what hurts as you sit there? Um, first here. <laughs> I need a lot bottomy probably after this interview. <laughs> um, I said so many stupid I'll, things. Believe me, uh, I will buy you one. <laughs> It would cost you. The, uh, um, how many uh, operations? Um, a few, ten or something. Ten, all on the knee? Yeah, knees, uh, bunions, this and that, shoulder, and this and you know, ankle. Um, no, but I did, luckily I had a really uh, extraordinary group of doctors taking care of me. and. Uh, um, I uh, I survived. Yeah. Yeah. Are there things that you wish you could still do that you you can no longer do? No, I always I always uh, I decided in very early uh, age that I will do classical work until 35, 37 or so, and I did that. I stopped dancing uh, rep classical repertoire and that. You know, but luckily. It was uh, un unnoticeable because I I, I moved to uh, to other uh, other work, you know, and uh, and in my tender age of 65, I'm still dancing. <laughs> <laughs> not not very often, and in the street shoes, but still dancing. <laughs> Do you, do you still practice every day? Yes. How long? Um, it, it depends. Uh, you know, there's some days right now when I was working. You know, with Bob Wilson, there's a lot of movement. I I did warm up seriously, and I even 
because my partner in crime was Willem Dafoe, and he's an extraordinary yogi. He does a practice every day for a couple of hours. And I was just like stretching with him sometimes. And, uh, but I do my bar, my, I work with uh, sort of rubber balls, you know, just to do certain stretches and uh, try to um, keep my body, I mean, in, in line, so to speak. Uh -huh. And, and, and every day? Uh, not today, and not yesterday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I, I, I would imagine, I asked uh, Betty Oliphant this once uh, when she was... I getting, loved her. Yeah, she's a fantastic she woman. She was a fantastic woman. Really fantastic. I asked her, she said that getting older for a dancer, uh, and not, not just getting older, really, but becoming less physically capable, is the hardest thing that, and she said that you, you have to resolve it and you have to face it, but it is the hardest thing to re resolve because, you, you, you know, as you stepped up on the stage, I noticed how graceful you are, you know, even at the advanced age of 65. She didn't say that that's the, mostly for, a, for the man, no? Sorry. <laughs> the, Betty said, you know. I mean, a, a mortality in general, of course, there is a, you know, uh, I, I, I think of it all the time. You think I mean, of it all the time? Uh, yeah, pretty much every day. You know, I'm saying, I'm alive. <laughs> that means I'm speaking about mortality. And I, mm -hmm. you know, but one day I wake up and I'm not there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then what to do? <laughs> it's, it's like Woody Allen. And I that's, the, it's, it's very Woody Allen, yes? Yeah. It's very Woody Allen, uh, yeah. It, so, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, very Woody Allen, I think. Yeah. Yes. Well, Woody yeah. Allen said, I, I'm not afraid of death, I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I guess is uh, guaranteed, uh, really. No, I mean, I love to perform, and I'll perform as, uh, as long as I, in my view, do something meaningful on stage. Mm. You know, whatever it is, you know, walking, saying something, moving something, yeah. uh, uh, moving, moving myself, talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> then when people start to notice. <laughs> 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 yeah. That would be it. But you only do moment. it in a room, you don't do it on the street, do you? I do it on the street. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I get carried away sometimes. My wife was, you know, a little late and she was talking to herself. T yeah. Today, I notice. And she said she confirmed that she did. <laughs> then that's good. I, I, I want to ask you just one or two more things. Uh, when you say you, you think about mortality every, every day, do you. I, this is just a theory, and I'm an amateur ballet goer, a dance goer. I love to go. I go with my daughter who, who dances or danced for 15 years because her mother danced for 15 years because she was 10 years old and she went to New York City and she saw you dance. Mm -hmm. so, but when I go with her, it's a fantastic evening. Uh, and I always, pretty much always, and I'm not a crier, even though I'm a journalist. I mean, I barely have a soul. You, know? <laughs> you do. <laughs> really, it's very small. But Welcome to the boat. <laughs> <laughs> but when I go to the dance, I, I always cry. Mm. And the last time it happened, it was uh, Jerome Robbins' uh, Glass Pieces, mm. that beautiful dance where it's everybody yeah. walking across in unison, and then they have a little pot, and then mm -hmm. they come back, and then again, about being conformist but not wanting to be, about the city. And I see this dance, and I think, you know, I can't, I'm crying, as I'm, as, and it's not a particularly sad dance, but I'm crying. And I've been trying to figure out why I cry at that dance. And I think, I, for a while, I thought it might be because it's about hope. Because Robbins went out and he thought, I am going to make a picture to show people how we live. And, and he was already, when he was doing this piece, uh, in, in, you know, in a certain age. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I knew Jerry quite well and uh, Mr. Robbins. Um, and... Uh, the further he went in, you know, in, in his career, the, the m most uh, intense uh, he, he got during the rehearsals. And, uh, and uh, he was a very demanding choreographer. 
and sometimes very ruthless even, but that's the... Um, but he produced, he, but until the very end, produced wonderful work. Mm. But do you think there's something to that, that, that dance is moving because somehow it gives you hope, or do you think it's about something more physical? Why, why, do, why does it move us so? Why do we keep, keep coming back to watch it as, as strange and beautiful as Because it is? it's such a, you know, uh, uh, any m body movement, and again, I drop a cliche on Mart, uh, 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 Graham, that body cannot lie. She, uh, she used to love to say, body cannot lie. You cannot be somebody else on stage, no matter how uh, good of an actor, a dancer, singer you are. When you open your eyes, you move your finger, audience knows who you are. You know, and uh, it is such a, when the dancers move, or together, or individually, in the beautiful piece of the choreography, and with the uh, go gorgeous light, uh, and uh, uh, very arresting and walking kind of music, and revealing themselves. Uh, it is such a privilege to be in an audience, and at that point, I would like to be audience. And I, I don't want to be on stage because it is a privilege to be audience to witness this. And then you can cry, <laughs> you know. Then, if you want to, don't, don't Just, say uh, it like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people cry, some people don't. You know, sometimes I do too. You know. <laughs> Like when I see myself at age eight, you know, dancing, <laughs> I just like, I don't see. Who is this child? Yeah. Yeah. Children what? are vile. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing. Uh, you said last thing already ten know, questions no, I, before. No, I said it. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> having good time. Don't keep going. Um, if, you, if you don't mind. You know. <laughs> Someone said to me that there could never have been anyone else like you on the dance scene because you were a, a unique talent at a unique point in history. That you, you became, in a way, because of the affection, because of changes in the culture, because of changes in dance, um, you became a common point around which people could rally. I was watching some young dancers who were here at the center, and. I noticed that they were looking at their favorite dancers uh, on YouTube, you know, and they were going, it's fantastic, look at that, look at that, look at that. It, I, it made me wonder whether, it, you know, because the culture has fractured a lot because of electronics, it's rarer, I think, that people get together for the collective experience of watching people move, of watching human beings reveal themselves, you know, as they move. Uh, so. We, we kind of lose the opportunity to, um, uh, you know, people in this audience will say, oh, I, you know, I bet they will say, I saw Barishnikov when he came to Banff. I was there. There is something about being there. Do you think w we're losing something of that? And do you think it's important, or do you think we'll make it up in other ways? That collective experience. Well, I mean, the the education, uh, let's say, you know, classical education in the 20s, 30s, even 40s, when d parents took children to hear opera or to, to, to see, to, to, to Philharmonic Hall or a dance performance or, uh, um, you know, let's face it, we, we live in the reality of, uh, of uh, internet. And uh, we are educating, our, we in general, royal we, uh, educating uh, ourselves online, and then the information comes to uh, from from uh, uh, from one uh, side. It is really very progressive, and it's quick, and it's very convenient, and everything. But in my view. Uh, you know, a lot of 
young dancers losing their contact with their teachers. Uh, human contact is much more important. And, um, and uh, if the only advice I, I can give to young dancers to try to really trust their teachers more and, and, and stay with them longer and try to understand why they're teaching uh, 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 this way or other way, you know, and not to just uh, 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 run around and try to get something. Um, maybe because we grew up in different times and, uh, you know, that connecting with somebody much older and much more on the knowledgeable, it was a privilege uh, for us. Somehow, sociopolitically, now um, young people get uh, on their feet much earlier in life, they leave home earlier. They're you know, they're getting to the start to make uh, you know to get into the company at age 16, 17, and spending their 15, 20 years dancing hard, mm. you know, and uh, and sometimes they you know losing the perspective why they're doing this. They just know from within themselves that they feel this need. But then a lot of tragedies happened when the, you know, those dreams um, are start to crumble, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, uh, have a life besides dance. It's very important to, to see the work of others and not necessarily in dance different kind of dance. Go to see people in, in you know, works in the galleries and go to to music concert to to read a book, you know, and to and you know bunhead it's bunhead, you know, but there's a there's something it should be something in that bun, you know. <laughs> uh, um, and it's very important for uh, for uh, all artists and uh, all dancers. If there's, I notice there's a lot of dancers. You know, meet people. Meet people not necessary, not in arts. People who your audience. And talk to them freely. Don't be aggressive. Uh, and ask them what they mostly didn't like your performance. That's the more interesting conversation than listening to the, uh, uh, the good reviews, you mm -hmm. know. It sound, this sounds like what the 65-year-old Barishnikov would say to the 26-year-old Barishnikov. Um, well, at 20, 26, I arrived, uh, uh, yeah, the Oak Islander, yes. Um, well, to say to myself, I don't know what I say to myself. I, I uh, um, actually, my wife asked me today, what, what, if if you have a, just a wish, what you'll do for the next ten years? Um, I, 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 I was stunned because I, I realized I don't have an answer. Um, it would depend. But today, I don't have an answer. Um, I will wake up tomorrow, and maybe there is. A, I know a few projects I want to do, you know, and then related to theater, and uh, and I have to perform next year two plays simultaneously, kind of leapfrogging, and which will be a very hard year because in the theater, somehow theater. Um, stays in your mind all the time. Uh, in dance, you arrive home, you're exhausted, but you, sure. uh, it's kind of, you can flush it yourself out, uh, 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 you know, a massage, good night, sleep, uh, get drunk, and you know, I mean, just like. <laughs> that sounds good, let's go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> A better theater stays with you and, and it exhausts you. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Huh. But, well, okay. you should come to Banff. You should hook up with the Banff Center. I you know, will. I'll be back. You could figure out the next 10 years here. Absolutely.
Uh, thank you. That, that concludes the formal part of the interview. <laughs> okay. uh, but we have questions from the audience and um, uh, the, the red paddle, yes. Fifteen years ago, I watched you dance on your 50th birthday uh, anniversary tour, and you did something that I think is physically impossible. And can you explain how you danced to your heartbeat? Oh, uh, heartbeat, And yes, made uh, it slow down at the end while you were dancing faster. Well, this was a piece by, um, a semi-improvisational piece, which was uh, developed Sarah Rodner, choreographer and dancer, and she suggested that I would I could try, um, and she was really fascinating. Um, it, it was experimental piece, which um, uh, sort of uh, electrodes attached to some uh, muscles of the heart, and uh, and, and uh, whatever you do in a contraction of the muscles actually goes to the speakers and goes to the audience. It is like the doctors listening your heartbeat, and but it's. And uh, of course, the, um, I used to be so nervous uh, to, to come on stage uh, that my heartbeat was like 150, 160, and then I could um, I could manage to uh, to make uh, sort of to 70, 75 by a very formal. It's very. Actually, easy exercise. It's a breathing and uh, bending when your, you know, uh, the a skull and your head is below your waist. Of course, the then um, uh, then body is uh, protecting itself. You don't have to pump, uh, you know, the blood to your brain, and it automatically slows down your um, the pulse. Uh, but, uh, you know, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that dance. It was a very interesting challenge, and I, I love that dance. The red, pa red paddle right there. I'd uh, just like to say thank you so much for coming to Banff, and I hope you uh, get back here sooner than later. Um, I, I wanted to ask you uh, what it was like dancing with Gregory Hines, because in the movie White Nights, your contrasting styles were so dynamic, so I just wanted to ask you how that was, please. Well, Gregory was really a very close friend. We got very sort of tight together uh, during the shooting, you know, and, uh, um, you know, of course I knew, I knew him and his brother, and, uh, um, uh, you know, watching, him on stage, you know, and, and on television and films, you know, I, and uh, it, it was a fascinating, of course, experience, um, you know, being away from home, it, it, it was long shoots in England somewhere, you know, and um, it, it, he was just such a, a brave soul and very funny guy, very, as you told me once, this, uh, he said, said, tell me about your childhood. I said, we didn't have any childhood, you know, my brother. I said, you know, what I really remember when I was, uh, because the family was performing, you know, the father, I mean, just the whole family were on stage. And he, my aunt, when he, she was pushing me uh, uh, on stage, like, you know, said, Gregory, go and get that money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, that was all Gregory, you know, he loved young people, you know, he loved people who were f following him, you know, Savian Glover, it was his, I remember Savian, that, that all, he was just, uh, he, he loved life more than anything, he was, uh, he consumed life, you know, he was such a gentle, yeah, with a man with a giant heart and extraordinary talented. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
You've transitioned from being a dancer to being a director, and I'm wondering if you can speak to the challenges of leadership while you're still performing in an art. Uh, a director, I mean, what I'm doing now or what I've done when I, as a director a couple of times, uh, run by American Ballet Theater for 10 years. And uh, what I'm doing now, it's uh, I'm, um, I'm artistic director of, of uh, our art center in New York, and uh, that's my nine to five job. Uh, actually, it's uh, nine to 11. Uh, it's 24 seven, in fact. Uh, uh, that's the, probably the most uh, in, uh, interesting and uh, important project I've done in my life. You know, something which I never thought I will do in that uh, volume and that depth. And uh, if something really changed my life, that that project. I am not a director with a, you know, with a stick, uh, although I can be short tempered, as you notice. Um, um, uh, but, uh, you know, to work with the emerging artists, artists of all generations, and, uh, and if you have an opportunity to help them to succeed uh, and, and, uh, uh, and stretch their vision. And uh, I love to be, I'm repeating all the time myself, fly on the wall to see. I'm a bit of a voyeur, you know what I mean, in this sense, because I'm not choreographer myself. And I don't teach young people, per se, you know, to dance or, you know, if they're not asking me some direct advice, I'm try to uh, 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 stray away from it because most of the time I don't know myself what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Otherwise, the blind, you know, leads blind. You know, and I don't want to offend any blind people if they're here. And but that's kind of cliche, and the English language is not my mother tongue. Uh, but um, being a director, I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to, uh, to do something in New York and United States and at an international group that <coughs> New York would be more friendly for artists. When I arrived in the 70s, it was a different system. It was really uh, so much fun, so much fun on the streets and cafes and, uh, and you know, in the, in, in the lofts. It was really carefree kind of wonderful uh, existence. People, you know, it was more dangerous on the streets, but uh, so much fun we had. And then more and more with the pressure of the commercial uh, real estate, of course, and some of the conservative governments. Um, you know, the kind of sort of a, a glib uh, certain moments. I kind of stray away from New York uh, for a while because uh, we were, you know, at some point politically, you know, we were thinking seriously, move to Europe with my wife, with the children, this and that, and uh, but we decided to stay, and thank God we stayed. It. And uh, I started this project with the center, and here we are. It will be in next or so ten years, and um, I'm very proud of, of uh, our group. And I have uh, really extraordinary people working uh, with us. And uh, yeah, a director, yeah, director, but doesn't mean I mean director. Yes, at the back. Yes, uh, recently the Russian parliament passed a law, a very harsh law, um, like prohibiting uh, homosexual propaganda. And I'm very interested to hear your comments. They're just on stupid this. people. And just like, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Mr. President Putin, it's the wrong ways to educate people. Well, next. I think we have time for one last question on the right. Thank you. I was wondering if you could um, 
think about what you've learned from dance that you think the rest of the world should know to help us make the place, this world, a better place? Um, <clears throat> you know, I will answer you one way, you know. You learn every day something new. That's new info. Um, I, I just performed this a play directed by Bob Wilson with Willem Dafoe, and there's a, there is a one uh, moment in the play which we sit and we repeat the same phrase with Willem back and forth. And, uh, and that phrase probably shook me, uh, uh, you know, uh, deeply and moved me deeply. And it's, it's, uh, it goes like that. This is how hunger begins. The morning you wake, feeling lively. Then begins the weakness. Then begins the boredom. Then comes the loss of the power of quick reason. Then comes the calmness. And then begins the horror. That's it. And and it's written in 1922, I think, you know, by Daniel Harms, this author of our play. And, you know, uh, well, think about it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mikhail Bershnikov. Thank you. Thank you.